function of our sunrise service this morning. I know all of you were up early enough to see it, and it was beautiful. And we thank the Lord for such a wonderful, beautiful morning. We're going to start things right off this morning with a, a feel-good moment. Uh, Tad has brought a friend with him uh, from the McAdoo Cumberland Presbyterian Church, and they're going to provide some opening music for us today. So, gentlemen, please, thank you very much for your presence this morning. Good morning, everyone. He's risen. Yes. Amen. This is my friend John Dubler. Uh, John is a is a music leader at McAdoo, and uh, he's also my music mentor and teaches me on Tuesdays. So he uh, graciously uh, consented to come and play with us this morning. So later on, make him feel welcome. This is a song. Um, were you there? And it calls into question your your ability to think and imagine what it must have been like, the you know during the time when when Jesus was crucified. So um, just let that resonate with you for a little while, and we'll try to play this and make it sound good for you. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when the stone was rolled away? Were you there when the stone was rolled away? Oh, oh sometimes. It causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the stone was rolled away? Were you there? When they crucified my Lord. Amen. 
Amen. And one of the reasons we started with these two young fellows is because they have obligations today uh, beyond serving us here. Before we have our opening prayer, I'm going to light the light of Christ in our sanctuary, and we will have our opening prayer. may notice that we have four candles this morning and we do that on Easter because the light of Christ is shining even more brightly than normal. Gentlemen, that was beautiful. Thank you for opening our service in that manner. Let us pray together. Mighty God, we have already seen this morning your glory. The beautiful sunrise, another beautiful day, another gift to us, your children. We thank you for that. And I thank you for these men who have taken their time to come and bring to us music to our ears. The words of a song that touches the heart of many people because we understand the value of that vision of our Savior nailed to that cross for our benefit. Heavenly Father, we have so many things in our lives that we are grateful for. This morning, personally speaking, Lord, I am grateful for these people who decided to rise early this morning to come into your house and begin their Easter journey by worshiping their Savior, by worshiping his Father, and by invoking the name and the power of the Holy Spirit to be with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 217, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. We're going to do all verses of that, and I want to remind you that that's the first song of our Easter journey, and it is a song that you must sing with all of your energy, Christ the Lord is risen today. Number 217, please rise and let's sing together.
Amen. You may be seated. You know, on Easter morning, we have several pieces of scripture that are appropriate. All of our uh, gospel writers, all of our original evangelists tell the story of Easter. But for the sunrise service, I have gone to the book of John, one of my favorite books, and we're going to read starting in chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Chapter 20, starting with verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran away and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running, running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter the bold one, he came, following him, and immediately went into the tomb. He saw the, lot, the linen cloth lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first, he also went in and he saw and he believed. For as yet, most of the disciples did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary, she stood not understanding weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why is it that you weep? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around, and she saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom is it that you are seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. But Jesus said to him, Mary. She turned and she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher or rabbi. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he has said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to get a little bit out of order here. I had planned on us singing Holy, Holy, Holy at this point, but I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this particular piece of Scripture. 
and I entitled it, even though we don't have a bulletin, Getting Your Mind Around This. Meaning, get, meaning getting your mind around what your eyes have seen and what your ears have heard and letting it settle in. You know, that's kind of a contemporary phrase. I can't get my mind around that when something happens that we just can't visualize, we just can't understand, it doesn't fit into where we are and what we understand. Now I will tell you, I had a friend, and I know he wouldn't mind me sharing this story with you. Years ago, an elderly man, and I would visit with him, and we would have coffee together. And his wife, he was a widower, his wife had passed away years before, at least two years before I started to go see him. And he told me, he said, Pastor Stewart, sometimes I still, in a moment of weakness, in a moment when my mind cannot get itself around the idea that my wife is no longer with me, he says, I will be in one part of the house and not thinking clearly, I will call out her name. I will call to her as if she is still with me. And then, of course, it sets in. She's no longer with me. She's with her Heavenly Father. Now, I give you that example this morning. It's, it's, it's a sad story for this gentleman, obviously. But to try and help you understand what Mary... Peter and John, who wrote the book of John and calls himself the one that Jesus loved, which is a bit bodacious, we must all admit, they were having trouble getting their mind around what they were seeing and what they were hearing. Now, we sit here this morning, and we may even in some fashion kind of look look down on them just a little bit because, of course, we do understand. We do know. But imagine being in their place, someone that you know has been crucified, has been placed in the tomb, and the different evangelists, the different gospel writers, tell us that some of the women stood off at a distance and they watched the crucifixion. Some of them stood off a little ways and they saw his body being taken into the tomb. And some of them were privy to the words of Jesus Christ prior to this morning where he tried to tell his disciples and all of those who were with him this is going to happen. I am going to be persecuted and crucified. Now, first of all, when he said that, they couldn't get beyond that because they had a vision of Jesus as the Son of God, the Son of Man. And so I think they kind of had a little bit of a mental block that flew up every time he said that to them. We're going to Jerusalem, and I'm forewarning you. I will be turned over to the authorities. I will be killed. I'm going to die. And they're still having that buzz around inside their head when he says, but in three days I will rise again. And I think maybe we do that. Nancy would tell you I do that. Sometimes I hear the first half of what she says, and while I'm thinking about that, I miss the second half. And then later on, she'll go, but I told you about that. I got, and I, I don't argue, because I know it's probably true. 
But you can see that the disciples were having a really difficult time dealing with this particular moment. Now, I am truly thankful for those gospel writers who continued the story. I still remember being behind my house doing some gardening work after Easter was over. And I had one of the members of the church call me. And they said, how many days was Jesus with us before he ascended? And I said, well, the scripture tells us that he was with us for 40 days. And I'm so grateful to those gospel writers who recorded what he did and what he said to his disciples during those 40 days because it was extremely important. If you haven't spent much time looking at those words, you need to go and read them again before we meet at 11 o'clock. It provides so much insight, so much explanation, to Paul's writings when he says, God's going to give you a new body, one different from what you have, one better, one greater. And it helps things begin to gel just a little bit for us. For us to understand how Jesus entered and exited buildings without using a door. How he could stand before Mary, Jesus the Christ that she traveled with for two or three years and, and she didn't recognize him. It helps us to understand that beyond the grave, beyond our, our resurrection, there is a world beyond that veil that we really can't get our minds around. We're going to see and experience things just like Jesus experienced things during those 40 days. And it's going to be magnificent. That's the message of Easter for us. That's why we have four candles for the light of Christ, the presence of in our church this morning. The light will go off. We will understand. We can explain because we're dwelling in that place that Jesus tells us is coming. A place he already knew about. And I love the way that this particular description, of course, John goes much further in the description of that day, of doubting Thomas, of the great catch of fish on that day when he had breakfast with them on the shore of the sea. All of that is in there. But I, I, I love what he tells Mary to tell the disciples. And we'll finish up with that this morning. Mary Magdalene, she went and she announced to the disciples what Jesus had told her to say. You see, she was the very first, and I usually say this every Easter, people forget it. Mary was the very first evangelist for Jesus the Christ because she took what she saw, what she knew, what she heard Jesus say, and she went out beyond herself, beyond that moment, and said, I have seen the Lord, and he is alive. That is what we're supposed to do as agents, as apostles, as evangelists, is go out just like Mary, with that level of excitement, and say, I have seen the Lord. 
Now, I know that some of you are thinking, but I haven't seen the Lord. And I'm here to tell you that, yes, you have. You have seen the Lord in the work of his servants, of his disciples. You have seen the Lord in the eyes of the children when they gather down front. You have heard the Lord when they answer my questions in a manner that is so intuitive, so true, so on point. When we, as adults, get asked the same question, we fall into uh, the theology mode. And we make an answer that that child can answer in five words, and we make it into 500 words. Mary is our example this morning. I have seen the Lord. You have seen the Lord. I have heard the Lord. You have heard the Lord. That is the message of Easter that we are to carry forth. Let us pray. Mighty God, we are so grateful that each one of these gospel writers, each one of these disciples, apostles, evangelists, took the time to write down this story in their own way, emphasizing in their own way what they saw as being important. That way we have the entire picture of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gift of our salvation and our resurrection as a result, as a consequence. And for that, Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you, before your gift of grace and your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, close with hymn number 234, Crown Him with Many Crowns. I invite you to please rise and stand together and as we sing um, the first and last verse of 234, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Please rise. Sunday, a day that outshines and outglorifies all of the other days that we have in our year and on our calendar. Let us take it in, let us live it, 
and be that glorification of Jesus in his name. Amen. to invite each of you, I know we all have busy days today, family lunches, business, at 11 o'clock today when we have our regular worship.